Hi, blackheads. You're stuck with me this month. Um, just kidding. You're not stuck with me. I'm making a guest appearance because um, this month your two blocks are a very simple block and a block using a technique called foundation paper piecing. I don't know if you're aware of it, but we have two block of the months going on right now. And the other block of the month is entirely foundation paper piecing. So, and I'm running that one. So that's why I am here this week. I have a couple of quick messages from my mom. The first is that the other block is made entirely of half square triangles. And she said that you are more than competent with half square triangles by this point. So you should be just fine to do that one on your own. The other message is don't forget if you bring in your blocks um, from this month, um, either before next month or when you pick up your next month's kit, you get to put your name, well, we put it in for you, but you get your name in the prize bucket. And at the end of the year, someone is going to win free long arming for um, this year's block of the month quilt. So that's definitely worth um, bringing your blocks to the um, shop to see. Also, um, to explain the change of scenery, we are in my sewing room at my house. Um, you don't get to see a lot of it because it is a very, very messy place to be. Um, but behind me is my design wall, which is huge. Um, the shop recently got 108 inch, um, I always wanna say fleece, but it's flannel, sorry. And um, so I just tacked a couple yards of the 108 inch back there. And now my entire wall behind me is a design wall, which is pretty awesome, okay? Okay, so to this month, what you're going to do, you're going to take this, um, it's turquoise, and you're going to cut four two by three and a half inch rectangles. You're also going to cut four two by three and a half inch rectangles of white. And you're going to cut eight two by three and a half inch rectangles of lime green. And then five two and a half inch squares of lime green. And that's everything you need to make this block. You also are going to have, I'll be right back. I dropped them. You're also going to have um, four little paper squares and they look like this. And if the cameraman wants to zoom in a little bit, it's probably a good idea. Um, you are going to write on there on A1 and A4, you're going to write lime. On A2, you're going to write or abbreviate white. And on A3, you're going to write turquoise. Only I thought that was too long. So I wrote teal because I can get a little lazy. Um, you're going to do that on all four of these papers. The, you're actually going to sew on these papers. You're also going to trim them just beyond this dotted line right here. That dotted line is your final trim line. Um, so you don't want to cut right on it yet, but you do, you don't want to have a whole bunch of extra paper either. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to walk through construction of two of these. And when you are done, they will look like this and they should have those nice sharp points on them. People like foundation paper piecing because it gives them nice sharp points without them having to fuss a whole lot. Okay. So the, the numbers one, two, three, four are the order we're going to sew the pieces on. We're going to start with piece one. It's lime green. And for right now, we're going to take our lime green squares and set them aside. Those are used in block construction in the construction of your final block. And we're just going to stick with the rectangles for right now. So we're going to head over to the machine. On your machine, you want a foot that you can see easily um, where your needle is going. Because these, you're actually going to sew on these lines, so you need to be able to see these lines. On my foot, I have the HP foot. Some other nice options would be a satin stitch foot that's clear. Um, either of these would work. I don't know if you can see them because they're clear. This one's open toe and this one is closed toe. The other foot that would work nicely on my machine is the A foot, which is the satin stitch foot. This slit right here, it's very easy to feed the line that I wanna stitch on through that slit and know that the needle is gonna sew directly on it. But like my mom, I am addicted to my HP foot, so I am going to use that. Okay, 
I'm gonna grab all my rectangles and I'm gonna lay them here by my machine so I can see them. Um, the other equipment that would be very useful, um, I'm sorry, Jake, we're gonna have to go back out here. The other equipment that is very useful is either a shorter ruler that has a quarter inch that you can easily find your quarter inch line on. Um, if you have an add a quarter ruler, this is a great time to pause the video and run and grab it. Um, anybody who's done any amount of foundation paper piecing will tell you that this little piece of plastic is definitely worth the 20 bucks. Um, this side is tapered and this side is clearly marked at a quarter inch and I'm going to show you exactly how it works in just a few minutes. You're also going to need a seam ripper. Um, it's not so much for ripping seams as it is um, for poking holes in the paper and a pair of snips and a rotary cutter. Okay, so that's everything you're going to need. Rotary cutter, seam ripper, snips, and a ruler. Okay, you're also going to need your iron plugged in, so be prepared. Okay, now we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach um, piece A1 to our, to our paper. Um, the goal here is simply for the piece of fabric to stay on piece A1 and cover it completely. It's also got to go, um, these are your seam lines again, so your piece of fabric needs to extend beyond a quarter inch past all of those. So piece A1 is lime green. We're going to take a lime green rectangle and we're gonna put the back of the wrong side of the fabric, the back of the fabric, to the back of the paper. And these are nice and easy. We can lay it back there and we can see that it covers piece A1, it extends beyond it, and we're in good shape. So now we're going to baste that to our, we're going to baste the fabric to the paper. And this is just to hold it on there so it doesn't go flopping all over the place. A uh, basting stitch is a stitch on your machine that you use your machine to put on there, but it's meant to be removed. So you probably want to put this up to about 3.0, a stitch length of 3.0, which is right here. Um, if this was a bigger piece, you could make your stitch length um, longer for this a three is more than sufficient so now I'm just going to sew anywhere I want in the middle of the piece okay in the middle of piece a1 okay I'm just going to base this guy on and again all I'm trying to do is make this so that the fabric sticks to the paper so I just stitched a basting stitch straight down the middle of piece A1, okay? Now you need to lower your stitch length to 1.5, and I'll tell you about that later. But for right now, lower your stitch length right now to 1.5 because we're done basting. Here's the reason for the snips. I hate these little extra guys hanging out all over the place. They drive me nuts. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we've got that stitching on there. So we're gonna fold our paper right here Jake we're just going this far we're gonna you can use the tapered side of your add a quarter ruler if you don't have an add a quarter ruler go get um I'm sure you got a laminated postcard in the mail this week um that is from an advertising somebody advertising something a lot of heating companies send them out this time of year go grab a laminated postcard you're gonna lay the edge of your postcard or the edge of your ruler on the line between piece one and piece two, piece A1 and piece A2, and you're gonna fold back. So step one here is fold back. And now, if you have an add a quarter ruler, you flip it over and it's got this lip on it. You're gonna butt the lip up, there you go, butt the lip up against your paper, and then you're gonna take your rotary cutter and you're gonna cut. If you don't have an add a quarter ruler, grab a smaller ruler and just lay the quarter inch line along the edge of your folded paper and cut, okay? If you have a hard time seeing that, grab some masking tape or some washi tape and mark your quarter inch so that it's easy to see. So you've got your ruler marked exactly where the quarter inch is. Now you line the edge of your tape up, the edge of your paper, 
and cut. So you folded the paper back and you cut a quarter inch away. So this is what it looks like. Okay, now you're gonna grab your next piece. And as you can see, piece A2 is white. So we're gonna grab our white fabric We're gonna lay the white fabric on the green fabric right sides together and along the edge we just cut. Okay, right sides together, raw edges nice and even. Flip this back over and we're gonna stitch on the line between A1 and A2. And remember, you lowered your stitch length to 1.5. You wanna start just beyond the line. You want to start out in the seam allowance out here and you're going to stitch onto the line and you're going to stitch on the line between piece A1 and A2. So we folded our paper back, we cut a quarter inch away, we flipped the paper back over, now we stitched. And again, my stitching started just a little bit beyond the line. I stitched on, I stitched along the line, and I stitched just a couple of stitches past the line. Now we're gonna press. I've got my pressing right here. We're gonna press as we sewed. You cannot, with foundation paper piecing, press open. You just can't. So we're just gonna push our fabric back, and we're going to press it. I'd like to take a moment to point out that I don't have the same iron as the ones at the shop. Mine is actually a lot more expensive. My mom and I ordered this iron to audition. We thought we would like these better because this brand is supposed to be amazing and we thought we'd like these better. But you'll notice that we don't have these at the shop because the ones at the shop are um, um, hotter and the point is much, much better. And this one is very awkward to hold. So that's where things go when they don't make it into the shop. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing over again. This is what it looks like right now. We're gonna just do the same thing over again. We're gonna fold, now we're gonna attach piece three. So we're gonna fold on the line between pieces two and three. You'll notice the stitching is getting in the way and pulling the fabric. Take your seam ripper, lay it on the stitches and just pull back um, and rip your paper a little bit, okay? Fold on the line between piece two and three. Cut a quarter inch away, either using your add a quarter ruler or your smaller nonstick ruler. Add your next piece of fabric, which it says is teal, which is turquoise. Add it raw edges together. Flip your paper over and we're going to stitch on the line. We're going to start just beyond the line and we're going to sew just past the line. The line between pieces two and three. And now we press it. Try not to burn yourself on the steam. And now we're gonna add piece four, which is lime. Okay, same thing all over again. Loosen up your paper so it's not in the way. Fold on the line between piece three and four with your ruler or your postcard. Fold, cut, Flip and stitch. We're just gonna do that over and over and over again. Fold, cut, flip and stitch. Fold, cut, flip and stitch. And don't forget to press before you start again. So fold, here, just go like this. You should be able to see.
When you're all done, when you have all four pieces on there, you're just gonna set it aside and I'm gonna show you what to do in just a minute. We're gonna keep going because we were doing such a good job. So we're gonna do one more time. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach your first piece with a basting stitch. You're gonna set it to about a 3.0. You're gonna lay your back of your fabric so it's on the back of your paper. Piece one is back to back. Back of fabric to back of paper. And we just stitch down the middle of the shape so that our piece of fabric stays attached. Okay, now we're gonna fold. We're gonna cut. We're gonna add our fabric. See if I can't get that coffee cup off there. Added fabric. Flip our paper back. Make sure our stitch length is at 1.5. And stitch from just beyond the line onto the line. And then at the bottom, just beyond the line again. And then we press. The reason our stitch length is so small is that when we're done constructing this block, we have to rip the paper out. And it is much, much easier to rip out paper that is perforated very close together. Okay? So, loosen our stitches where they're gonna be in our way. Not loosen the stitches, uh, disconnect them from the paper. And you'll notice if you have an add a quarter ruler, you have to flip it upside down so the lip is on top in order to get the get it to lay flat so that you can fold on it nicely. So fold, cut, place your fabric, raw edges together, fold, cut, flip, and stitch. Press our seams. Oh man, my coffee cup got cut off. Oh well. Okay. Last time. Fold. Cut. Flip and stitch. If you have to, you can pull a paper back here and just make sure your raw edges are together nice and straight. It's a good idea because the uh, closer you are together, the more accurate your results. Okay, last one, we're going to press it open. And now I've done two, you need to do two more. You can pause me and you can rewind me and I'll talk you through the next two. Um, spoiler, I'm going to say the exact same thing I already said. Or you can pause me and do it yourself, but go make um, two more. And when you've got them all looking like this, come on back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've got all four of your blocks done now. You should have four blocks that look like this. What you want to do is you want to grab your seam ripper and you just want to pull out these basting stitches real quick. Okay, they should just pull right out. All right, so now you have a nice clean 
front. Sometimes, if you're lucky, with basting stitches, nope, not gonna work. Sometimes you can pull the whole thing at once and it's really kind of fun. But not today. Okay, so you've got, got them all cleaned up. And now you wanna grab a non-slip ruler. And what we're gonna do is we wanna trim on this dotted line that's a quarter inch away from these seams, okay? Sometimes people wanna just grab their add a quarter ruler and use that to trim. This is not sturdy enough. Grab one of your um, non-slip rulers. You can put your quarter inch line on this line here, but, and then there should be, it should be a quarter inch from here to your dotted line. So if you put your quarter inch mark on the solid line, the outer edge of your ruler should be on your dotted line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean these guys up so they're exactly the size they need to be. They should finish at two and a half inches in order to be the same size as your little lime green squares. Okay, we'll do one more, this guy. And, and from here on out, it should feel very, very familiar because from here on out, we're not doing anything special that's foundation paper piecing. We're going back to uh, just regular st uh, stitching like you've been doing. Okay, so your block gets laid out like this. These guys all go in the corners. Then you grab your two and a half inch squares and they're gonna get laid Like this and now you should just sew them together the way you normally do you're gonna sew these guys these three together then these three together then these three together and then you're gonna sew your rows together the question is when can I take out when because um, you do have to rip the paper off the back and when can you do that um, I usually finish my block and then rip the paper out. You can take it out now, but the truth is it's gonna stabilize your block, or it's gonna stabilize these smaller units a little bit. So if I were you, I would leave it in. And actually, actually, I'll show you one real quick here, because this can be really kind of fun because you can do the same thing. You can just sew on the line instead of sewing. You can just sew on this line instead of worrying about your quarter, your scant quarter with this guy let's see you're just gonna sew on the line and you can go ahead and leave your stitch length small and then it'll be easy to pull the paper out okay so you can um, attach all of them that way but in, now you want to rip the paper out of this seam right here. Because what you're going to do is um, you're going to press your seams for nesting. Okay. So you're going to attach that guy and then you're going to attach this to the other side. Make sure your raw edges are really close together. You want to check it actually I'm gonna to have to fix that because um, he's up too high so I'm gonna to have to rip that and shift it down but what you're gonna do is I would actually go ahead I would make my rows and then go ahead and rip your paper out and press so that way then you're ready to press your seams and you can press your seams for nesting so I think mom has been having you press the top and bottom rows out and the middle row in and that'll go much better if your paper is out of here because if your paper is in here 
um, and you need to press directly on it, it can cause all kinds of issues with, um, it can transfer this because this was printed on a laser printer. So you that can, the heat of your iron can activate the toner and it can actually take this whole image and press it onto the front of your block, which you don't want to happen. So go ahead and after you've got your rows made, then you're gonna rip your paper out and then you're just gonna sew your three rows together and you will have a block that looks like a pointed star, okay? If you guys have any questions, you know where we're at. You can call us anytime um, and you can email us or whatever, but we will be happy to help you. Don't be afraid of foundation paper piecing. It's really a lot of fun and it'll get you some really pretty points, okay? Happy stitching, you guys.